Our scripture reading for this morning is found in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul as he writes to the church in Corinth. Now I remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the Twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, to someone untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I but the grace of God that was within me. Whether then it was I or they, so we could proclaim so that you have come to believe. May God add a blessing on the reading of his word. Today is a day in which we gather to tell the story. And that story is that our Lord has risen. We'll try that again. I'll use the hand gesture to kind of help. Our Lord has risen. risen While that passage of Corinthians may seem a little out of place, because we're used to hearing the Easter story of how the tomb opened and everyone was overjoyed, this is a part of that story that happened a number of years later. Recalling that memory, but reminding the people who hear it of the story. The story that our Lord is risen. You see, this is the story of all stories. It is a story that changed the face of the earth so many years ago, yet the same story continues to change our lives every day and every season of Easter as we relive it and as we retell it. It is a story of Jesus the Christ, our Savior, God's only Son, the Messiah, and the victory over death. Now, because this is something that we celebrate year after year, let us not make light of this story, as if it were just another season of Easter. This is no small feat. For the finality of death is one of those things which evokes fear in all people of all cultures throughout this world. And Jesus did not escape it. Jesus died upon that cross. He was in the tomb for three days, and then he rose from that grave and lived. Psychologists, psychiatrists, ministers, astrologers, life, co- life coaches, and so many others have written book after book about how we should approach death, to deal with death, and live a life not fearing death. Yet so often death consumes our thoughts, particularly after we've lost a loved one, after we've experienced some type of tragedy, Or just watch the news and see the massive tragedies that are happening throughout throughout the globe. We seem to be more consumed with death around birthdays, and some seem to come quicker and quicker these days. And that on the calendar kind of scares us. 
Now, I cannot tell you for certain why death scares us, because I read probably about 45 different theorists and ministers and life coaches who gave a definition, and none of them were the same. All I can tell you is why it scares me. When I was in my 20s and 30s, death scared the bejesus out of me. For some reason, it would pop into my head and it would freeze me in whatever I was doing. And it happened at the most inconvenient times, at the most inconvenient places. I remember one time I was driving across to Missouri from St. Louis to Kansas City. I got overwhelmed by this feeling. I pulled over to the side of the road. I could not trust myself handling my vehicle. Why did it scare me? Why did it bind me up? Why, does it t- why did it take over my mind, my heart, my soul, chaining me in a cold fear of the unknown with each link of that chain being up of questions like, if I died, who remember me? Will I live long enough to make this world a better place? Keep in mind, I was and still am socially awkward, so will I ever fit in? What awaits me when this life is over? Now keep in mind, I knew the teachings of Scripture, and I was and continue to be a person of faith, but for some reason this fear would pop up and captivate me, and to be very honest, I loathed it every time it happened. But now, as I'm approaching 50 faster than I care to admit... My mind doesn't go there as often as it once did. And the chains of fear no longer cripple me as they once did because I know one day my work in this world will end. And it's taken me a while, but I've become okay with that. In fact, there's a part of me that's beginning a journey in which I'm embracing it. For nothing of this world lasts forever. None of us do. Merely the presence and love of our God. You see, today we gather to tell the story of Jesus' death. A terrible, painful, very public death to wash away the barrier of our sins. You see, sin is that thing when we either think or act intentionally or unintentionally in the opposition of God's plan for us. It can be as simple as being outright defiant, and it can be as absent-minded as merely being ignorant. But a sin is a sin is a sin. And they stack up. They can pile up. Mine are mountain ranges. And God chooses to love us, love me, despite them. For when he sent his son, the idea of God being separated us from the heavens, from the sky, from the dome that surrounded the earth, from the cosmos of space, God reached through all of that, breaking those barriers and not mainly setting us straight, but making his presence known and a part of our lives. And through Jesus, his son, we're able to see and experience that each and every day. Holy Week takes us on a journey which encompasses the last week of Jesus' life. We relive and recount the gruesome way he was crucified, this beautiful son of the living God. We recollect and recount the experience of the disciples as they hid for three days in that upper room. Three days they lived without Jesus. Three days they lived in fear that they would be the next ones crucified. All they had to keep them company was the depth of their grief and sorrow that Jesus, the one who gave them courage and empowered them to go go into the world, was no longer with them. You see, they now would have to be the one to deal with the crowds. And they would be the ones dealing with the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees and those who would call into question everything they were trying to do in the name of the loving God. When the master and the leader's gone, it's very scary for those who are following. 
I think those three days must have felt like an eternity. For they had no idea what awaited them, even though Jesus had already told them. Finally, three days passed, and as we celebrate this Sunday morning that we call Easter, the day of Jesus' resurrection, comes the promise of a new day. And not only a new day, but a dawning of a new life. For in this day, it was discovered that the death of Jesus was not the end. Just a step in the journey. The crucifixion of Jesus may have been a gruesome death, but what follows, in that three gra- what follows in that grave three days later is most amazing, a most amazing sign of God's power. For it is a sign of life. A sign of life not for Jesus, but for all those who believe. It is a sign of eternal life. Today, we gather. We give praise to God for our Savior has arisen. So the Lord is risen. risen He came back from the grave. Jesus, the Lamb of God, has conquered death. But for me and the way my brain works, there are questions that always arise. If death is conquered, what comes next? What follows that which we believe was impossible? What happens when the scriptures really are fulfilled just as they were written? What do we do when God has kept his promises? What does life after death really mean? The signs that help us understand us are all around us. Yesterday we had an Easter egg hunt. All over the place you've been seeing Easter eggs. We have Easter flowers displayed out here. Bright colors come in the Easter season. Hymns and choruses. And all these things point to a new life. A no longer being cast down or chained down by the old ways. It is the celebration of a new beginning. That which you've done up to this point that's held you back no longer has to. For today starts a new day with new possibilities because our Lord has risen. risen We come this way to hear the good news. For Easter, the resurrection, is a fresh start to celebrate, if only for a day. Jesus rose from the dead, and it is a new beginning. Today is all about the good news that Christ has died, Christ has risen. Hallelujah, praise be to God for that. For on this day, Each and every one of us in this room, young, middle-aged, old, is empowered to live a new life in Jesus our Savior. To live with confidence and assurance that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is with us always. Death has been conquered. That fear of the unknown. Jesus has come back from the grave, what then on this earth do we possibly have to be afraid of? So then what can stop us from living lives of absolute certainty? Not knowing the plan and the detail of how everything will unfold. But the plan and absolute certainty in knowing that God is our Lord over life and death, sin and salvation, good and evil, and that God who is with his Son and brought him out of the grave is the same God who is with us every moment of every day that we live, both this life and the next 
Our God came to us in the form of a human child, modeled a life of humility, servanthood, and unconditional love, died a humiliating and excruciating death for our sins, and then returned from the dead to prove that those who needed just a little more evidence that God is still steadfast in fulfilling his promises as recorded in the prophecies of Scripture told so many centuries before. That is the story that we tell today. Because as believers of the resurrected Messiah, it is not merely God's story. It is not merely the story of Jesus. It is our story as well. For we have been promised life after death because we believe that Jesus has life after death. We believe. We can rejoice because the promise God gave to Jesus, God gracefully has given to us through Jesus. So on this day, we should ring the bells, sound trumpets, smell fresh flowers, Go ahead, hunt for more Easter eggs if you can find them. Sing the songs of a God's amazing grace for the things which stop us from moving forward, binding us with fear, that chain us to a place of the big scary unknown, no longer have a hold on us because Jesus, our Savior, has risen. But this celebration should not simply be held to Easter Sunday. This celebration should be embraced and celebrated next week, next month, six months from now. It is a story we should never forget, as our Corinthian brothers and sisters may have, been, may have done so long ago. Paul had to remind them the greatest things for them is to remember each day Christ, our Savior. God's only Son, died for our sins in accordance to the prophecies of the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day, all in accordance to the prophecies of the Scriptures. That's a very nice way of saying God's plan. Jesus conquered death. We no longer need to be afraid of it. That is the story that we should embrace. That is the story we should believe. That is the story we should tell, and that is the story we should live. Each and every day we walk this earth. Would you all pray with me, please? None of this would be possible without you, O God. To know you, to feel you, to experience your love, to take your love and return it to you and to share it with others, none of that would be possible without you. But to help us along, you sent your Son. So we could not only have an awareness, a knowledge of you, but then we can feel you. Because you, really, you revealed your love. You revealed your power. You revealed your steadfast devotion to us by not only walking with your son, but resurrecting him from that tomb. Help us to live and tell that story, to relish and celebrate that story as we go about this day of Easter, a celebration of your son's resurrection. We ask this in your son's precious and most holy name. Amen. In this way, the way that the church were the church works is countercultural to the world because in the world we think, okay, the beginning of January, beginning of the new year, beginning of new life. But that's not what it's like to journey with God. Our new beginning starts today. 
New life individually, new life in our families, new life in our workplaces, new life in our travels, new life in our churches. Apply it to everything. Because that's the kind of God that we have. It's not going to hold the mountain of sins against us, but gives us a way to be forgiven, to be reclaimed, to be recast, remade, renew, and reconnected with that God who loves us. That's the purpose of sending his son, and that's the power we receive through the resurrection. So as you go from this place and you take what you've heard, think about it, pray about it. If there's something there, apply it to your lives. But as you all go from this place, do not be afraid to tell the story because you all are children of God. Go in grace. Be filled with his peace. Have a great holiday. Have a great week, everybody. Amen.